Hello, welcome to our Syracuse University MFA panel featuring three of our graduating third year master's students. We have Maya, Anshul, and Brett. We're here today to highlight their artistic achievements and to discuss how their work in fibers and mat other material studies relates to larger questions of identity, heritage, materiality, and more. Before we jump into some burning questions, um, we're going to have each of our panelists introduce themselves. My name is Maya Stern. Uh, my thesis title is Stern in German means star. Stern in Yiddish also means star. Uh, I'm presenting at the Community Folk Art Center in Syracuse, New York. My work explores my family's complicated history of lost Jewish identity and the contrary involvement during World War II. I'm able to engage in this history through an archive that's been developed by my ancestors and using components of these various objects, photographs, writings, I'm able to deconstruct them. I utilize materials and techniques that can be unwound, discolored, or aged to depict, if not honor, the mutable nature of memory. So there are two things that really inform my arts practice, one of which is printmaking. <laughs> my background is in print media. Um, the way I see it, printmaking is at its, at its basis when it's stripped down to absolutely nothing else. It is a transfer of information or knowledge from one surface to the next. You have the matrix, which contains all information, which is passed on to its substrate. However, it's passed is how it's passed. I see this to really represent the same way a conversation might between two different individuals. Um, the second thing that really informs my practice is artifact. Um, though I use these artifacts, um, like photographs, writings, what have you, um, they are never presented in a way that is um, ever describing any sort of legitimacy and storyline. They're always breaking down or otherwise deteriorating through some sort of manual intentional um, destruction. So in this uh, circumstance, these three um, different photographs were scanned uh, with 50 DPI resolution until the image basically wiped away. They're presented on um, unfired ceramic. Um, so this is my thesis work, which I'm presenting at CFAC. It's called Opposites Attract. This is a woven screen print made with bleach. Um, what I really love about um, fibers and weaving is that it's able to distort the image once it's printed um, and then woven together, it kind of creates this interesting connection between printed material that is pre-existing information and um, the woven material, which contains basically nothing. The other half of my thesis is One Life to Live, which is a reproduction of original manuscripts written by my grandmother, um, which she wrote in the 1960s when she came to America. Uh, these were all printed with iron powder on muslin. So as they age, they begin to rust. And um, over time, this rust will fill in the text and it will no longer be legible. And there's some detail shots. everyone, my name is Anjal Rai Sahib. My work is part of the MFA thesis exhibition, Carrying the Thick Present, and I'm presenting at the Syracuse University Art Museum. So the sum of the themes that inspire my work are cultural displacement and a loss of identity. I moved from India to the United States in 2017, and this experience of moving from one country to another is what inspires my practice. You know, I talk about themes of cultural identity, longing, and nostalgia through my work. And one thing I use in order to talk about these is material that, that holds personal or cultural significance. And that, you know, that familiarity of the material acts as a constant, you know, in this chaos of uncertainty and cultural displacement. That material allows me to create narratives that can address identity, longing, and nostalgia. So to talk about the work that's in the show, I wanted to start off with this sculpture. Um, so this is called A Precarious Life. And I wanted to you know, honor this experience of building a new life in a new country. And <clears throat> you know, the egg is the universal form for a new life, a potential 
moving forward, you know, looking forward to something. But I've covered it with basmati rice, which is a material, you know, that's Indian. But other than the fact that, you know, basmati rice is considered a premium quality of rice because of the length of the grain. But back in India, you know, culturally or in terms of like when there's rituals, when you're having a function, if there's a housewarming, you would use basmati rice in that ritual because it's a whole grain and it represents auspiciousness or prosperity. So, you know, here I'm trying to cover the surface of the egg with the rice in order to create this new life or it's, it's very similar to, you know, the aspirations that you come with to this country. And so I wanted to build that new life for myself. So that's what the egg represents. Here's a detailed shot of what the close up looks like. Um, because, you know, other than the aspirations, there's also the aspect of a looming uncertainty, be it administrative challenges or personal. There's always, you never know what the future holds. So there's always a sense of precarity or uncertainty in this life. And I wanted to encompass all of that in this work. The other work that's in the show are these portals. They're titled Portals Reweaving the Present. So as someone who is, you know, I haven't visited India in two years, more than two years, but you know, the physical distance also distances you psychologically. So as someone who's standing on the boundary, I'm able to look back with a critical lens. And one thing that has allowed me to do is realize that I grew up in, you know, amongst a lot of patriarchy and misogyny, which has caused me to internalize that. And now it's up to me to undo it. So the portals act as a mechanism for that introspection. And the way that I've approached this is through the deconstruction of material. So they're essentially weavings. I've built a framework for myself. And, you know, I, I wanted to talk about this um, you know, fabric as a foundation. We talk about the fabric of a society or the space-time fabric. So I wanted to use that metaphor of fabric as a foundation to build a new foundation for myself. And the centers of these portals are these whirlpools that I wanted to talk, you know, when you are in this process of introspection, you have to sort of look back at the things that you've been a part of, but also think about what are you projecting into the future? So it's a lot of going back and forth. There's a lot of going inside and looking at, you know, what are the values and beliefs that I want to go forward with and what are the things that I want to get rid of? So there's a lot of movement that's happening and the centers represent that. But the materials that I used, you know, again, going back to this idea of cultural significance, there are saris, there are headscarves. So they are all these materials that represent certain, like they can be gendered, they can be feminine or masculine. But when I break them down and combine them, I'm creating this new foundation that allows change. Um, yeah. And here's a detailed piece of what it looks like up close. Thank you. Hello, I am Brett and I'm an artist from central Pennsylvania that works in ceramics and fibers. Uh, I'm a part of the MFA thesis exhibition here at Syracuse University. Um, and my series of works is titled, Wish You Were Here, Wish You Were Queer. So a lot of my work started in ceramics. And um, as I started to come to grad school, I was working with a lot of um, domestic objects from the home that were already fired. So I began altering them um, sort of rediscovering, discovering, unearthing uh, subtexts or alternative stories out of these very like normative sort of um, rural middle-class objects that are often found in a lot of American homes. Um, so I would, you know, I would take and etch things away or I would carve things away. Um, I also started to, as I started to work in fibers, I started to take these symbols, these found images and objects and translate them into other materials. So I was, I was using sort of like everyday symbols and then sort of um, kind of altering them through material. Uh, and then I was, I'm also really interested in place. So I think 
identity and gender um, and sort of how our objects around us sort of influence or define the stories that we tell or the stories we tell ourselves about identity. So these two plates um, are actually from my hometown that I've altered and added to uh, into sort of a way of like contemporizing or showing sort of a more present history. I think a lot of the objects, the banal, the everyday objects that I find sort of push and pull against this idea of like a nostalgic past that um, so much of these objects commemorate or memorialize uh, and make it sort of about the present and also potential futures. So the work that I'm presenting at the exhibition, like I said, is titled, Wish You Were Here, Wish You Were Queer. So there are three large scale quilts and one um, larger weaving. So as I started to make this work, I, you know, I think I was for sure sort of longing for a physical presence from people. I was missing friendships and family. And I, I began sort of collecting these things, juxtaposing different materials and objects and images together, um, sort of using my own personal queer sensibility, uh, you know, patching things together, layering things, um, and then making these, these quilts that I think for me really have to do with pushing and pulling between masculinity and femininity, um, urban and rural. Um, and like I said, a past, a present and a future. So a lot of these materials I do get from yard sales or thrift stores or um, estate auctions. And I sort of pull them all together and make these larger works with. So this is the first one as you enter the museum, Fancy Farm Boy, A Familiar Stranger. So this is a large quilt made of all denim. Um, one side of the denim is faced with this like pink glittery material. Um, and then so patched together and then also quilted through um, the image of a keystone, which is like the logo for Pennsylvania. So this is sort of a self portrait, if you will. The second piece is too much is never enough. Uh, which is a, a weaving made with um, men's neckties. So those are actually neckties woven together to create this weaving um, with the base being like a camouflage netting. So I think, you know, for this one, I think it's really pushing and pulling with the masculine, talking about the masculinity of sort of the place where, you know, I was raised, but also how that affects sort of contemporary culture and politics. Um, the third piece is titled All in a Day's Work, which for me is like an exploration of gender fluidity, if you will. Um, thinking about sort of baby blankets or sort of projections as we're children, whether we're boys or if we're girls and what that depends, um, what that influences what we do or how we speak or what we wear. Um, and so for me, this is sort of a, just a mashup of everything. And I really think it's quite beautiful. Um, here's a detail, princesses, cowboys, Elvis, uh, with all these like beautiful little flower, like knotted flowers, um, glittery stars. So I think, it, I think it's humorous and also sort of, also serious in a way. This is the final piece, um, proceed with caution, acting out. And with this piece, I was really thinking about as a queer person, sort of the labels that we get projected onto us um, because of you know, how we act, how we speak, um, but also seeing through that. Um, so there's this repeated sort of floral motif that I've quilted and the quilting actually does go all the way through the quilt. So um, unfortunately with the exhibition, you can't really see the back of it, but the, the floral motif is sort of what goes through the entire piece rather than the words that are kind of thrown only on the surface. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves and your work. I have a wide range of questions for our, for our panelists um, based on materials to process, to subject matter and a little bit more context. To kick us off, I just have a few general questions based on the images that you shared with us um, for your current work in the show. So uh, would you be able to each take a moment to 
walk our audience a bit through what the space is like, or if there is some sort of direction or temporal reading um, for our virtual audiences for how to navigate all of your works. I would like for people to honestly navigate through it how they find best, um, but do look at it from afar and then up close. Um, there is a difference definitely in the way that the the works appear from far away rather than when you take a much closer uh, look at them. Um, you'll find some really interesting subtleties in terms of the texture in rust printing, as you might with um, the gaps between uh, even the image when you're looking at my weaving. Um, so I think from afar and up close is probably the best, best way. Yeah, I think I, for me, it's pretty much the same thing as that. So you can, you know, you can look at them from far away or you can look at them up close. But if there was an ideal way, I would say start from a distance. And then I hope that the work invites you in. Because with both the works, there's a lot that's happening on the surface. So when you're there, when you're up close, then I want you to start noticing those details. You know, the, even if you cannot touch it, I think you can sense texture and tactile is more than just the sense of touch. So then I want you to be present and there in terms of noticing what's happening on the surface, you know, notice the deconstruction of the material, what are the materials that are used, what happens with the repetition and all those things. I think I have the unique opportunity to be showing work right at the sort of entrance of the museum. So I think mine's actually the opposite. I think you're gonna be really close to the work as you enter the museum. Um, there's a lot of color, a lot of bright color, a lot of different textures and surfaces um, that I hope then holds the viewer to then back up, um, see the small pieces, um, really investigate closely and then, um, you know, imagine or think about those relationships and the connections between um, the objects and images. Sometimes they feel a little jarring. Some of them are like, why are those together? Um, but no, I really like the fact that I think a lot of the viewers will be up close and personal with the work as they enter. Absolutely. And I think each of you also has a, an additional step to your work that there's a, a reading internally as well that it asks these bigger questions to take with you um, throughout the rest of the exhibition. So following up on uh, your, your works, uh, do you have a certain working process? Like how do you come up with ideas and how do these manifest into your final products? When I work, I tend to start with um, how it's going to be presented um, through the technique that I'm giving it. Um, so it'll develop through a technique which goes through a lot of um, experimenting. Then it'll go through more of a finalized state and then it gets a little bit deconstructed. Um, there's a lot of testing that goes on in my studio. Um, and that's really how it goes most of the time. So I think for me in the studio, there's a good mix of visualization and then material exploration and then the actual making. So ideas usually start as questions. So for example, for the egg, the question was, how do I make an object that can talk about my experience? You know, the uncertainty, but patience and perseverance with which I've built this life. So that was the question I started with. So then I'll start collecting components like, what should I brainstorm, you know, what should the visual look like? What are the materials that I need? And then once I have those materials, that's when I start making. And I think that period of making is the most exciting part of being an artist because, you know, the more time I spend with the material, the more I start understanding the intentions behind my actions. And I think, I, so I use a lot of repetition in my work and, you know, through repetition, I can make material do things that it, it's not meant to do. So like we all know that rice is a grain, it's meant to be consumed. But when I start poking the surface of a styrofoam shape with the rice, it starts creating a tactile surface, which, you know, this excitement of, I can tell that this is doing something, but I don't know what the final is gonna look like. That fact that 
that curiosity is fascinating and that's what gets me excited as an artist. I think for me, it's a lot about collecting and curating objects and images that I find. Um, I guess if I were to sort of categorize, it's sort of like um, the final works are sort of a, a like synthesized moment between experiences that I want to make work about and then sort of objects or images that I, um, you know, sometimes I find images that inspire the work. Um, other times it's more about a certain experience that I'm like searching out something. Um, so it's not ever one way, but I do think the work that I'm most excited about and with this work for sure in the exhibition, um, it's really this beautiful moment when personal experience or heritage or um, sort of cultural moments come together with these materials that I have amassed in my studio one way or another, and then it comes together to make this work of art. Thank you. It's always great to hear from the artist about their own process. For, for an outsider looking in, we wanna know what, what's going on behind the scenes. So we've spoken a little bit about uh, each of your backgrounds in other art fields and media and materials. And so I was wondering if you would like to share on your past experiences with other materials and how that informs uh, or informed your process for this MFA show. So my background is in printmaking and printmaking will always be single-handedly one of the, the biggest pieces of my practice. Um, I'm really interested in the way that printmaking, though it is intended to be a multiple, something that is identical, can have this extremely unique and um, totally one-off quality um, when it's done in a totally non-traditional way. Um, that's how I'm always informed. What can you do with the singular impression how can it be different than something that is meant to represent something identical? What can you do that makes printmaking something that can inform a viewer? Um, historically, it is used as something that was meant to kind of pass along information and knowledge. Um, so I like to kind of honor that tradition and history in my work. So I did my undergrad with a specialization in printmaking and I used to do a lot of etching and aquatint. So etching is when you prepare the surface of a copper plate and you bite it with acid. So there's a certain number of steps and procedures that you need to complete in, in order to get to that final image. And you know, you can never be sure of what that print is going to look like when you're making that plate. And this, this process is, I see it as a collaboration with the medium because it's chemistry. There's only a certain extent to which you can, you know, interfere. The material will do its thing. The medium is going to do its thing. And so when I'm working in the studio today, I think it's very similar to that in that I'm working with the material and its limitations. You know, with the saris, if I cut them into really thin strips, if I pull too hard, they end up tearing. So then I have to be cognizant of that fact. And one thing I will say is that printmaking has taught me a lot of rigor and a lot of patience. So I think in essence, today, when I'm working in the studio, I'm very much working like I used to as a printmaker. So my background is in ceramics and I still work in ceramics. So I think I work in both. Um, I think what ceramics sort of taught me and working within ceramics is that a lot of my work has to do with surface. And I think the ceramic process has much more at times to do with forms and bodies and vessels. Um, and I think my work going back and forth between the two, um, like thinking about the quilts in the exhibition, those for me are so much more about coverings or about skins or about surfaces um, you know, what's projected onto the surface, what do we wear, um, how do we protect ourselves in, you know, in relation to comfort or discomfort. Um, so I think it's sort of a balance, you know, I think often in, my, in the past, I felt 
like at odds with ceramics. Cause I think those internal things, the more body um, vessel for, like forms or like moments in the ceramic process with raw clay. Um, so that's a huge difference as well, working with raw clay versus like a fired object that I can then alter mainly only on its surface. Um, I think really like it was just sort of a learning exploration to realize that you do need a body, you do need a like a, a form to work with the surface. But I think I'm so much more interested on like the sort of external qualities of ceramic. Um, but I do still work in it, you know, and I sort of, I think now making this work about quilts, like, I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to go back to work with raw clay. It's so fascinating to hear all of your backgrounds and how it it still be, becomes part of your process no matter what material you're working in. I mean, I hope for anyone who's also watching this is able to uh, kind of uh, recognize the the further experimentation that they can do in their own practice as well. Um, next, I wanted to talk about a more specific theme that came up in each of your um, introductions. So I was wondering if you could each speak on the theme of identity or relationship and how that fits with your thesis work. Um, is there a lived experience or moment in your own life that influences the forms and subjects of this specific show? So every week um, I would learn about my ancestry in the car as my grandmother, who I was not allowed to call grandmother. It was only Omi and nothing but Omi. Um, as she would drive me to dance classes, um, she would pick me up in her little Honda Civic and uh, she would just swerve through lanes of traffic uh, to avoid traffic cones. Um, but as she did, she would describe her upbringing in um, Nazi occupied Austria and how that affected her, how that affected the family. And so that relationship really became a foundation for me, really. Um, it is what my work really um, discusses a lot of the time, um, this really complicated heritage and how it affected her over time. So for me, I think, identity is pretty much the undercurrent of my practice. You know, as someone who is between two cultures, there's, there's a very interesting dynamic that happens because you don't want to alienate yourself from your roots, but then you're also excited about assimilating into a new culture. So that can end up messing up with identity. In terms of the work that's in the show, I think the egg is about a projected identity. It's about who do you want to be? You know, what is the life that you want to create for yourself? What does it look like? So it's about your dreams and aspirations. And the portals are about the inner, you know, this idea of in undoing internalized misogyny. It's such a personal and vulnerable process. And I think it's different for whoever is trying to do it or decides to do it. And that's why I think the portals are very much about the inner. You know, one way, so like I said, they're weavings. And even when I was making them, there was, I think, I think of it as a surgical process. You know, I would measure out the length of the yarn I need and then I would cut the fabric. I had to be careful that I cut it in straight lines. And then when I was weaving it, I had to make sure that I don't fray the edges because of the friction. So at every step, it was a very calculated way of making. And then I would stop and look at what it's looking like. You know, what are the colors I need to add? How, what's the next step? So I was accessing a lot of intuition and working from intuition. And that's other way of, you know, how I've sort of worked with the inside. A lot of people have mentioned that the portals look like mandals, which are these objects of spirituality. So, you know, in a way they are about this look inside, you know, who are you when no one's watching? Who are you? And what are the values that you believe in at your core? So I think in that sense, the two works are different, but are talking about identity. I think for me, the work that's in the exhibition is the first time that I really directly 
made work about the women in my life that have essentially loved me since I was born. Um, my mother, my grandmothers, my great grandmothers. Um, growing up in a rural area in Pennsylvania, there's sort of this really beautiful and complex and complicated culture of um, like Pennsylvania Dutch history and tradition um, and this sort of like Appalachian, but not really because it's like Northern, um, but it's really beautiful. And I think it's the first time that I really started to think about um, the things that I've been fascinated for for quite some time, like since childhood. Um, so my great grandmothers would always quilt, um, but you would have to like be around you would sit on the couches, but the quilt would be in the middle of the living room. So there would be like no room to do anything, but we were still sort of communing. Um, and yeah, like my mother's scrapbooks. So it's sort of this like, you know, idea with like images and three dimensional, two dimensional quality to it. Um, I'm not very good in the kitchen, but I'm so fascinated with sort of everything. Um, so, I mean, my grandmothers are both amazing cooks and bakers. But yeah, no, I think for the for me, it's really about, I don't know, thinking over the last year, really thinking about the people in my life um, that have gotten me to the place I've been, you know, that's sort of finishing grad school. You're like, well, how did I get here? Um, and for me, it's like, I think it's always been there, but I think it's the first time to really just be like, put myself into those traditions in a way that I hope honors and celebrates them. And then, I don't know, like putting myself within that history and hopefully, I don't know, passing it along to friends and family in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this personal side to your work. Beyond just these themes of identity, I wondered I wondered if you could speak about why fibers, why these materials um, specifically? Um, are there certain communities or groups of influence in your life who have kind of led you towards fibers or a tactile a visual experience more so than choosing other materials? What I really have grown to love about fibers is it is able to absorb. And in combination with printmaking, particularly screen print, the options are just kind of endless. Um, I have really gotten interested in replacing traditional inks with other materials that can produce different results. So when I'm working in fibers, technically most of the time it's loom weaving um, and you're able to print on the warp of the loom which runs uh, vertically on the loom, it's the up and down threads. Um, when I do so, I'm printing with bleach, which reacts with a cotton thread to really weaken it and also just kind of suck away all of the color from the thread, permanently damaging it. Um, so I think fibers is able to kind of say things that I would not normally have the opportunity to say through the material and through the way that it can be manipulated. Um, so then when it's woven together with the weft thread, which runs uh, horizontally on the loom. It just distorts the image. It kind of shifts things. Um, you can't keep the loom at exact tension, no matter what you try to do. Um, it's always constantly changing, which I really have grown to love. I think for me, <clears throat> you know, some of the materials that I'm using in the work are these saris that have been handed down to me by my mother, my grandmother, my mother-in-law and their friends. So it's like this small community of women and I have their essence through their saris. But when I'm using those saris to make the work that I'm making, the one thing that it does is I can open up the conversation to include their voices. Because this work isn't just about me, you know, change doesn't happen overnight. It happens over generations. And I, I do want to honor the lived experiences of the women that have come before me. And the saris allow me to do that. So I can talk about my experiences while honoring theirs. And that is something that I think, you know, fibers is really good at doing. The other thing I would say is fibers is such a loaded material. You know, fibers are part of our every day, but then I feel like, like Maya said, they absorb, you know, they absorb the essence and they 
have this ability of being a surface, they can be a vessel, you know, you can shape them, you can start them. So there's so much that you can do to them as an artist that it gives you a lot of potential. So that's why. I think I would agree with both what Maya and Anshul said. Um, it's just, it's so complex. Um, I think fibers, for me, especially with the, um, the quilts and the weaving, um, it's just so densely layered. It says so many things um, all at the same time, which I think for my personal experience and my um, work makes so much sense. Um, they are sometimes the most direct, simplest things, but then also the most fluid queer objects always, um, depending on how they're used or how they're manipulated or altered, um, whether you put something on it or you take something away. Um, it's really, just, it's just so complicated. And I don't know, I feel like I can't just pull one thing out of the idea of fibers, but I think I just, it's just this beautiful expanse of so much possibility within, I guess, within a category um, that, yeah, it's like a weaving, but it has a lot of loose ends that you can like pick at. And I don't know, I'm excited to keep exploring fibers in the future. Excellent. Yeah, I agree with all of those sentiments as well. And um, I think this material is something that uh, so many people are, are familiar with. It's in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and your work all speaks to what can go beyond just the lived day-to-day -day experience with fibers. Thank you so much for uh, speaking with us today. We're reaching the end of our panel here, but our panelists actually have come up with some questions for one another. So I was going to open the floor for their own questions on the work in the future. So I have a question for Brett and Maya. I mean, I've seen the work that you've made in the last three years, and I'm so proud of the trajectory that you've taken, but I'm really curious about how you access freedom in your work and how are you thinking about freedom when you're making work? As simply as I could say it, I access freedom by making. Wow, that's so beautifully put, Maya. Um, no, I think the studio for me, Anshul, is really about a place where I can, um, I don't think hide, hide feels negative, but in a way of just getting away from so much that is going on in the world, both personally, as well as like more globally, um, to really sort of explore and investigate the nuances of all of that stuff um, through material research, through like trying out new materials and like new techniques and looking back to the past of traditions and heritage um, in a way that, you know, it, it makes me excited. It, like the reason I get up in the morning to sort of figure more things out um, and also share those with everyone. You know, today our exhibition opens. Um, we didn't even mention it yet, but it, it's now open. So I feel really great um, sharing it, you know, sharing what we're all researching um, and maybe educating or just sharing our stories with others. You know, I think that's, for me, that's freedom. Yeah, I think I agree with that because, you know, through this, through the work that we're making, it's about, it's also about empowering yourself to talk about those experiences, you know, through a personal lens, but then also address all these big issues that we're tackling. Okay, I have a question for Maya and Anshul. Um, so, I mean, we're like nearing the end of our MFA experience. It's been three long, short, amazing, beautiful years. Is there anything you would have, you know, like to know, or maybe 2021, what you would have shared with you three years ago? 
I think like first and foremost, there is like no limit to the amount of experiments you can do no matter like how many things go wrong. Um, and when those things do go wrong, it doesn't mean it's a failure whatsoever. It actually is like so positive because you figured something out by doing that failure. Um, so really don't stop working. You are the carrier of what you know. So you know it best. I think I would agree with that. I would ask myself to get out of my way sooner. Um, I used to do this thing where I would think about ideas, but then I would not physically try them out. And that's one thing I would like to change is I would really want to pursue that physical material exploration because I think, like I said, there's a lot that happens when you start going in that direction and when you start playing with materials, so yeah. That's so good. So just keep moving forward. Maya, do you have a question for us? I do. Um, so we've all been pretty new to fibers, right? We have different backgrounds that we really explored when we came into the program. And then towards like the last year, we all kind of picked up fibers as something that was new for us. So I'm curious about what comes next in terms of material exploration. Like for me personally, I'm really interested in glass fusion and screen printing with glass um, and then also getting into fiber etching. So I'm curious about what the two of you um, have always wanted to explore and what you will be getting into next as a material. That's exciting. Um, that, there's so many things that are coming into my mind, but. I think one thing I will say is I'm, I sort of dabbled with casting. So like um, body casting or casting the figure, but then I didn't really follow it through. You know, there are certain ideas that are sitting in my head somewhere that are waiting for me to pay attention to them. So that's one material I'm interested in. The other thing I'm really curious about is, I don't want to say performance art, but maybe like video performance art. So um, because I am sort of indulging in these processes and like I said, I spend a lot of time making, I want to document that, that because, you know, I feel like that language also conveys a lot. And so that's something I'm curious about. I think for me, um, performance and drag have been like bubbling right at the surface for a while. Um, I mean, my work is all about how objects and materials influence our identities. So what better way to like actually just insert my own body into those? Um, and I have this idea of like, so I didn't really talk about it, but I'm like sort of obsessed with Norman Rockwell. Um, and not many people know, but he like starts, he started almost all of his paintings with photographs. So I'm really interested in like the near future to sort of make scenes or like, so the objects maybe become more props and then back to an image and then, you know, maybe full circle right back to ceramics. Um, so then my face is on a plate. Thank you so much. It's so great to hear all of the, the, the future work that we'll, we'll see from you all. I wanted to thank our audience for joining us today on this panel. And we encourage you to go check out their work that's currently on view uh, to really get the, the in-person experience of all of these ideas that we've talked about today. Thank you all. Um, I hope you enjoyed our, our kind of recording of our panel and feel free to reach out to us if you have further questions that you wanted to explore with this work.